So you've been traveling a lot. Yeah, I, I travel a fair bit with my job. Um, I'll be taking off, you know, selling encyclopedias. Um, <laughs> I'll be taking off at the end of April to do Japan and Australia and Europe and England. But um, mostly it's just I was finishing getting the album ready and making the video and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, now we see you on the commercials where you look great and you advertise working out. When you're traveling, how do you work out? Well, I go to the gyms when I can, and if I'm in a situation where I can't get out to the gym, I take my own equipment with me. Like, on tour, I take a life cycle, and I have floor mats, and, you know, there's no excuse for working out. You can do it. Yeah. Do you lift? What? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, dumbbells, or... I've lifted a few dumb things in my time, but, uh, uh, yeah, um, I, I do a bit of that. I don't do the body sculpting thing with weights a lot of people do. I really concentrate on the aerobic thing, mm -hmm. you know, like keeping my, my heart and lungs very fit and keeping, you know, mm -hmm. behind tight. That's important at my age. Yeah, yeah, I think it's very important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's been about 10 years since Morning Train? Yeah, 10 yeah. years. And I mean, yeah, Morning Train was the first single. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, luckily for me, a big hit around the world. But it kind of brings its problems, too. You know, if you have your first hit, you know, your first single out of the box is a hit, because then you do all of your mistakes in public. Yeah. You know, yeah. you kind of have to fail. I've had some moments that are on public record that I wouldn't want to repeat, you know, so. Yeah interesting outfits that I've worn and hairdos and things that what people like get then? to see. I mean... Oh, well, I don't know if you've seen some of the early stuff, but when I look back in it, I just cringe. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. one of the very first outfits that I ever wore on television in England, mm -hmm. and this was back in very, very early 80s, like 79, 80, and I had red spandex pants on. Now, I was... Let's just say I had more puppy fat then, because I wasn't working out then, mm -hmm. and... My butt was big. You know, I shouldn't have been wearing red spandex. I mean, I looked like a target. Right? <laughs> Listen, and nobody told me I was allowed to go out there with this big thing, you know? And, oh, man, I had some hairdos. Oh, oh, like one time, for instance. <laughs> I got a really bad perm, right? Mm -hmm. Now, girls, you can probably relate to getting a bad perm. You know, I had this horrible perm. I came home from the hairdressers. All my color had faded to like a sort of kumquat color. And my, my hair looked like a sort of red version of Estelle Getty and the Golden Girls, yeah. you know? Which looks lovely on her, but I was only 21. <laughs> this didn't work. So I thought, well, I've, you know, I've got to cut this out. So I cut my hair really, really short. It was about a quarter of an inch all over, just a little bit shorter than Sinead O'Connor. And. <laughs> I had to go around pretending I was really behind that look, you know, like in interviews, like, yeah, I think it looks great, you know? I mean, Sinead suits it. Or if it was a bad perm girl, now you can confess, because it's happened to me. Yeah. It's terrible. But, you know, you do all of that, and, and you, can't, you can't make your mistakes on the way up when you're just kind of open act supporting somebody. Mm -hmm. Like my first concert, right? I had my very, I'm not even allowed get a word in edge no here, but... we're here to listen to you they see me every night it's bringing back you know memories from that time um my first concert tour i had to go on stage the headliner and i'd had about three top 10 hits so it was a lot of attention mm -hmm. but i hadn't done this i was completely new didn't know what you're supposed to do and nowadays when i travel i have giant wardrobe trunks i have a wardrobe mistress she takes care of everything but nobody told me that then so back then i thought i had to take my own clothes so i had <laughs> My own clothes for stage packed into suitcases. And the driver that came to pick me up to take me to the airport didn't pick up these two suitcases. So we got on the plane, we flew up from, Inc from London to the north of Scotland. Mm -hmm. I got off the plane, went to the gig. I had no clothes to perform in. I was wearing a pair of jeans, a sweatshirt, and sneakers. So for my very first ever onstage performance, this is terribly, horribly true. I had to go around my backup singers begging clothes. Even the shoes were a half size too big. Man, I was mm -hmm. a basket case. I came off that stage crying. Mind you, at least I didn't wear the red spandex. So yeah. <laughs> yes. But look how things come full circle. Here you are today, a big star, still with no clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. You look great. And we'll be right back with Sheena Easton. <laughs> What makes this album different than the one before it? Well, it may, the thing that makes it different from any of them is this is the first album of my own where I've 
put on it my own songs that I've written. And that was scary for me to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess I didn't have the guts to do it before. I kind of wimped out, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, but I did it this time because I wanted to make a conscious effort in the past couple of years of lightening up a little, you know, of relaxing and, and being less self-conscious because I think that if I had to sort of nail myself for my own faults, you know, believe me, this is expensive therapy that's taught me this <laughs> stuff, is, is being <laughs> too, too guarded, you know, and too self-conscious and scared that I'll make the wrong move. So instead of making the wrong move, I just freeze and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, you know, the worst thing that can happen is, is that people hate it and people have hated stuff in the past and I've survived. Mm -hmm. So I think it's getting older has allowed me to express myself more. And, and it's a really freeing experience to be able to write your own songs because you can say stuff in a song that you maybe wouldn't say in a relationship, you know? So, so is a lot of your life on this album? I mean, because there's a lot of heartbreak stuff in there. Is, is that you? Well, I've been dumped. Really? Yeah, I've been dumped and stomped on. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody. In fact, one time I got my heart broke so bad, I had to go back to England to my mother. I mm. mean, for two weeks, because I was such a basket case. And, you know, she fed me like every five minutes, you know, like your mother does. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got over it, though. You know, the thing that, that um, coming from my background, having a strong mother, you know, she had to work to support us. She worked in a factory. She put six of us through school. Mm -hmm. um, my father died when I was young, you see, so it was kind of she raised us. She gave us that sort of backbone, that spine, and that self-respect. So I think when somebody dumps you, you just feel so rejected. You run, I, I feel that I run to the the people that I know really, truly love me the most and make me feel, you know, protected. Mm -hmm. So I ran back to my mother and, and she reminded me of my, my self-respect and all of that. So some of the songs that I write talk about heartbreak, but about the fact that you're, you're, a, you're a strong person, you know, you're worthy of respect and that, you know, you'll come through this and survive in the end. Yeah. Well, good luck with this album. Um, when you break that second single, bring it here. We'll be waiting for you. Thank you. This is Sheena Easton.